sports fans, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. Today I got another game, another series, well, another game in another series of my round robin matchups of a great team from the past against a bad team from the past. And today it's going to be the Battle of the Sox. Yes, yes, it's my White Sox. And I've decided to go with the 1983 White Sox, who are 99 and 63. If I wanted to pick a good White Sox team, I also could have picked the 2005 White Sox, but it turns out they were also 99 and 63. So I'm going to go with the 99 White Sox, since I liked that. I really, really loved that team. That was one of the, you know, that was really the team that got me going with the White Sox. So, um, and they will be playing against the 1965 Boston Red Sox, who were 62 and 100. So, an extremely bad record. And we will see how that works out, although they do have some very good players on this team, including their starting pitcher for today, Bill Mon Bouquet, who was 10 and 18. The record wasn't that great, but he had a 369 earned run average. The team also has players like Felix Mantilla, Carl Yastrzemski, Tony Canigliaro, Rico Petroselli. So it's not like this team is without their good players. In fact, I'm surprised, really, looking at the players they had, I'm surprised they were 62 and 100. Maybe my, my buddy Chris Dufour, who is an awesome Red Sox fan, could explain how the team managed to be 62 and 100. Maybe there was just some really awesomely great teams in 1965 and so the Red Sox were um, terrible in comparison but if you put them in like a regular league where the team where there wasn't a lot of really monster teams maybe they would be a lot better than that I don't know I mean that's possible so anyway um, as usual this is game one of the series it's a best of three it uses the DH, although this is the American League, so um, that's not so out of whack. It would have been for the 1965 Red Sox, because that was before the DH, but it wouldn't be out of whack for the 1983 White Sox. And, um, yes, it's the best of three. Um, first game, I will put the um, lineups, and I will write the lineups on the screen. You will see that pop up. Uh, but in games two and three, if needed, you, I'm just, you're just going to have to follow along. Because <laughs> I'm not going to do that with every, uh, with every single um, game. So, let's get underway with this. Uh, the uh, pitcher for the um, White Sox to lead off will be Floyd Bannister. I loved Floyd Bannister. He was my favorite. He was my favorite player at that time for that team. Maybe a tie between him and Kittle. But he was, uh, yeah, he was one of my favorites. So I'm definitely going to have him be the pitcher in game one. And he will lead off by facing Dalton Jones, the second baseman for the Red Sox. And he gets a 3-4, which is a ground ball pitcher A. So he's out. One away. Felix Mantilla, he gets a 5-9, which is a fly ball center field B. He's out. And hopefully this won't be a situation like it was with the 79 Pirates, who were a much better team than the 61 Phillies, but got beaten and bounced. So Carl Yastrzemski's up, and he gets a 6-10. And 6-10 is a double one to two or a single for Yaz. And he's going to get a single. So Yaz gets a board. First hit allowed by Bannister. And that brings up Tony Canigliaro. And he gets a 6-11. Which is a fly ball to the left fielder. And that's Kittle. And he is a 4. So you might see some serious um, trouble here. 16. And 4 in the outfield is... A single and air batter on second. So the Red Sox have runners at second and third 
Um, that was Canigliero, and he did get a hit, so that is a second hit allowed, but it is also an error on my main man, Kittle. So let's see what happens here. Lee Thomas gets a 4-8, which is a strikeout. So Lee Thomas goes down on strikes, and Bannister gets out of the mess, allows no runs to Boston. And that'll bring up the Chicago lineup. Now, what a lot of people don't realize about the 1983 White Sox is they got off to a terrible start. They started the season 7-10 uh, and 10 in their first 17 games, and they were 13-17 and 17 through the first 30 games, but ended up winning 99. That says quite a bit. They were, however, 18-10 and 10 in June. So Rudy Law is up. And he gets a 5-8, which is a pop-out to shortstop off Mon Bouquet's card. Gone. That brings up Harold Baines. He gets a 5-11, which is a ground ball to the first baseman. And the first baseman is a 3. That's Thomas. And that's a 3. That's going to be a single. There's no doubt about that. So, one out single by Harold Baines. Man aboard for the White Sox, and that brings up to the plate Tom Pachorek, who I also really love Tom Pachorek, and he gets a single one. Or it'll be a line out to third base, and it is a line out to third base, so he's out. Two down, man at first. Greg Luzinski, the bull up, and he strikes out. He was in the right column, but he got the wrong result. So, the White Sox get nothing in the first. We go to the top of the second. In a scoreless game, Rico Petroselli. So, 4-7, and 4-7 is a strikeout, one away. That'll be the second strikeout in the game for... Floyd Bannister. Lenny Green is up. He gets a 6-10. We know that's a double 1-2 or a single. And it will be a double. So Lenny Green, surprising. He gets the third hit off of um, Bannister. And that brings up Frank Malzone. And he gets a double. Frank Malzone rips a double and knocks in a run. Not good. Not good for Mr. Bannister. And uh, that brings up Bob Tillman. Bob Tillman gets a 5-10. That is a fly ball to center. The center fielder is Rudy Law, and he's a 2. That is a 14. That's an out. Probably an out with nobody going anywhere. And that is 2 away. Bob Tillman out, and... Up steps Dalton Jones, the leadoff man, and he gets a 3-10, which is a strikeout. So, uh, Bannister does strike two guys out, but he allows Boston to strike first and get a run. And so the White Sox are going to bring up the former Red Sox, Carlton Fisk, the catcher today, and he gets a 4-11 on Mon Bouquet, and it's a ground ball pitcher. And he's out. Ron Kittle. Ron Kittle gets a triple one to three or a single. That's going to be a single. So Kittle aboard. Only the second hit given up by Mon Bouquet. And that brings up Vance Law. And he gets a fly ball to left field. Or no, wait, one six. That's a pop out to short. So scratch that, pop out to short for Vance Law, half of the Law Brothers, Scott Fletcher, Scotty Fletcher gets a 4-6, and that's going to be a fly ball to left field. Fletcher is out. Another thing I want to mention is I only have the, um, the basic for the uh, 83 White Sox, I only have the, like, the basic set of the team. I don't have, like, the extended set. So, um, they don't have, 
the depth to grab that the 65 Red Sox will have, which is a bit of a disadvantage, really. Um, because we have no pinch hitters that are worth anything. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's not good. So, Felix Man Mantia is up for Boston. He gets a 6-4. That is a strikeout. So, I mean, Bannister is striking people out left and right here. That's his fourth strikeout. Of course, in 1983, he pitched 191 innings. Or, no, 217. He pitched 217 innings and struck out 193. Yastrzemski up. He gets a 4-8, which is a strikeout, two away. And that's a fifth strikeout. And Tony Canigliero gets a 2-10, which is a home run. Canigliero gives the Red Sox a 2-0 lead. Here in game one. So my main man Bannister is getting his butt handed to him by the Red Sox of 1965. And then we got uh, Lee Thomas up and he gets 3 7, which is a pop out to second. But the Red Sox do strike again and they get another run and it's now 2 0. And you got a feeling that this White Sox team of 1983 has the offense to strike big but you would hope that it happens soon Julio Cruz Julio down by the schoolyard gets a ground ball to shortstop he's out Rudy Law Rudy Law gets a 4-6 which is a fly ball to left field and then of course you have to also consider if the Red Sox did play in an era where there were some other monster teams and great hitting teams, especially Mon Bouquet's card would be all that much better, even with a 369 earned run average. And Harold Baines comes up. He gets a 411, which is a ground ball to the pitcher. So, no runs for the White Sox. We go to the top of the fourth with the Red Sox beating the White Sox 2 0 and Rico Petroselli up. He gets a 5-2, right field X. That's going to be Baines. He is a 2. And that is a 17. I believe he's going to be out. Yep. He is. So Rico Petroselli is out. And Lenny Green's up. He gets a 6-11. 6-11 is a fly ball to left. That is Kittle again. He is a 4, that is a 15, and that is a single. So, Lenny Green, I think he's been the beneficiary twice of hitting the ball to left field and having Kittle kick it around out there. So, he's aboard with Frank Malzone up. And that's a 3-9, which is a ground ball to the third baseman double play. Malzone, or Malzoni, I don't know. Maybe my, my buddy Doof can uh, clear that up for me. But they do get no runs there. And so they maintain the slim 2-0 lead, I believe. Yes. And, but Bannister is not pitching well. He's given up six hits, a home run, and two earned runs through four. So we got Tom Pachoric up facing Mon Bouquet. He gets a 6-6, six, six, which is a triple 1-2 single. That's going to be a single. So you wouldn't want to really see Pachoric out on his uh, horse anyway. He would probably be, you know, choking up a lung after hitting a triple. So we've got Pachoric aboard, no outs, and the bull is up, and he gets a 5-10, which is a ground ball to the shortstop. The shortstop is Rico Petroselli, and he's a 3 this particular year. 12 and 3 at short is an out 3. That's a double play. Are you kidding me? All right, so the bull hits into a, uh, a double play. And that brings up Carlton Fisk. And Carlton Fisk gets a 6-8, which is a line-out to first. So he's gone. 
He gone. We go to the top of the fifth. It's 2 nothing. It's just a slim 2 nothing lead for the Red Sox in the top of the fifth. Bob Tillman up. 6-6 six, six is a uh, ground ball to the shortstop. That's Scotty Fletcher, and he's also a 3 at short. And that's a 15. That's probably going to be something. Yeah, that's something. That's a one-base error by Scotty Fletcher. So Tillman getting aboard with a little help from his friends. Uh, Fletcher with the error. So that's the second error of the game for the White Sox. Dalton Jones gets a 6-7, and that's a walk. So this is no good. You got Red Sox on Dalton Jones walking. First walk allowed by Bannister, but he's allowing everybody and their sister on base. Felix Mantilla, 6-7, of course, is a walk. I don't think this is uh, going to be Bannister's game. Mantilla with a walk. And with that, we're going to get some activity in the pen. And the activity is going to be in the form of, or in the person of, Mr. Dennis Lamp. And that brings up Yaz with the bases loaded. You also don't want to see this. And that's a 5-7. That's a strikeout. Now he needed that because now you can get a double play. You've got some options. Um, so let's see here. Canigliero is up and he gets a 4-9 which is also a strikeout. Big time. So Bannister bounces back after loading the bases with no outs. And Lee Thomas is up and he gets a 5-5. And that's a fly ball to the center fielder. So he's out. So that was a big bounce back inning there. Um, Bannister, that was a huge inning for Bannister as he stopped them from scoring after loading the bases with no outs. And the very next batter being Yastrzemski. So, Ron Kittle steps up in the bottom of the fifth with the White Sox still losing by two, two nothing. And Kittle's up and he gets a 3-7, which is a strikeout. Another thing to consider is the 65 Red Sox. 1965 was a time when batters prided themselves on not striking out. Although Bannister has struck out seven Red Sox, um, and um, and when you got into the '80s, you were starting to get into a time where batters really didn't care if they struck out; they were just swinging for the fences, swinging from their heels. Vance Law up, he gets a six-nine. That is a ground ball to short. The shortstop is a three. That's Canigliero. Fourteen and three is going to be something too, I think. It is a two-base error. Canigliero making a two-base error. So that's a second error for the Red Sox. And that puts Vance Law on second with one down and Scott Fletcher up. And he gets a 5-11, which is a ground ball to first. The first baseman is a three. That is Lee Thomas. That's a six. We'll probably move the runners over, but it's an out. And it is. And it does. So Fletcher's out. And that brings up Julio down by the schoolyard. Cruz. And he gets a single and knocks in a run. Nice. 4 7. So Julio Cruz, the light hitting Julio Cruz, gets the first RBI for the. Uh, for the White Sox and cuts the score to two to one and Rudy Law up. And he gets a two six, which is a line out to first base. So he's out, but the White Sox do get a run and it's still only two to one. They're gonna stick with Bannister here. I was going to bring in Lamp anyway, but maybe not because you know I'm not Kevin Cash and the game is really close and most 
innings, Bannister's been on his, well, I don't want to say he's been on his game most innings, but Petroselli's up for six, is a strikeout. Eight strikeout for Bannister. Lenny Green is up. That's a 2-7. That's a walk. Lenny Green, he has been really a thorn in the side of uh, Bannister as he's two for two with a walk. Frank Malzone is up, and that's a 6-5, which is a fly ball to right field, two away. And Bob Tillman. Bob Tillman gets a 6-3, which is a walk. Bob Tillman with a walk. And that is going to be it for Bannister. We are going to bring in Dennis Lamp. And uh, Dennis Lamp falls into the, the abyss. Bannister goes five and two-thirds. And in comes Lamp. Dalton Jones up with two on and two out. He gets a 6-9, which is a fly ball to left field. And Dalton Jones is out. And uh, just out of curiosity for you people at home, that would have been a single if I had left Bannister in. So it was a uh, smart decision. We go to the bottom of the sixth with the White Sox losing to the Red Sox by the score of 2-1. to one. And Harold Baines up. He gets a 4-7. That's a single. Baines been one of the stars today. He's 2-3. for three. Fifth hit allowed for Mon Bouquet. Tom Pachoric up. 111 is a ground ball B, so now that'll be Pachoric at first with one down. Greg Luzinski's up. That's a 112. That is going to be a fly ball A plus injury. Fly ball A moves the runner to second, but Luzinski's injured, and we will roll the dice for that. Um, let's see. Roll a two dice, right, for that? Nope. Nope, you roll a 20-sider. So, let's see. Four. He remains in the game. He's temporarily injured and remains in the game. So, that's it. So, two away, man at second, and Carlton Fisk up. And he gets a 3-7, which is a strikeout. No runs for the White Sox in the sixth. We go to the top of the seventh with the Red Sox ahead by the slim margin of two to one. Frank um, Felix Mantilla gets a two seven, which is a strikeout. And that's Lamp's first strikeout. One away. Carl Yastrzemski is a 5-6, which is a line out to second. So Yaz is down. And Tony Canigliero gets a 2-10, which is his second home run of the game, I believe, right? Yes, it is. Canigliero, 3-4, for four, two home runs, and two RBIs. And with the way the White Sox have been hitting this game, that's probably going to do it. All right, we'll see. 110 is a line out to second base for Lee Thomas. But the Red Sox do strike for another run. In the seventh, they take a 3-1 to one lead. I mean, we only have one run, and that was knocked in by Julio down by the schoolyard cruise. We got Ron Kittle up. He gets a 1-7, which is a strikeout. And all my favorite guys have been terrible this game. Uh, Bannister wasn't that impressive. Kittle's been really terrible. Pachoric, what has Pachoric been doing? One for three. Vance Law's up. He gets a 5-8, which is a pop-out to short. 
two away. And Scott Fletcher up, and he gets a 6-7, which is a fly ball to right. It's getting late for the White Sox here. We're going to the top of the eighth with the White Sox losing 2-1. to one, Or 3-1, to one, sorry. And Rico Petroselli is up, and he gets a strikeout. Rico Petroselli. And the way I, the reason I say that like that is when we were kids, remember that song Rico Suave? <laughs> and it would go Rico Suave. <laughs> Well, my buddy Doof, who loved the Red Sox, whenever that song would come on the radio, he'd go, Rico Petroselli. <laughs> so, yeah, the memories you have when you're a kid. Lenny Green is up with one down. We got a 2-8, which is a pop-out first. And I believe that's two down, right? Yes, it is. And that brings up Melzone. And he gets a 6-9, which is a fly ball to left. Frank Melzone was robbed of a second hit of the game because I put in Lamp instead of uh, Floyd Bannister because that would have been a hit on Bannister's card. But now we got Julio down by the schoolyard, the star of the game, if we could say that, as he has the only RBI for the White Sox. That's a 6-7, which is a fly ball to right. And, of course, I'm keeping Mon Bouquet out there because, again, I'm not Kevin Cash. If you saw the sixth game of the World Series, you know what I'm talking about. Rudy Law is up, and that's a 2-9, which is a ground ball, two away. And Harold Baines is up, and he gets a 3-8, which is a strikeout. This is really incredibly crazy. We go to the top of the ninth. Not only do the White Sox have to stop the Red Sox from scoring anything right here, but then we got to get two runs just to tie the game. Bob Tillman is up. He gets a 4-11. That is going to be a ground ball to third. That is my man Vance Law, and he is a third base three. That's a six, maybe an out. It is. One away. Tillman down. Brings up Dalton Jones. Dalton Jones with the 6-5 ground ball to second base. He's out. And Lamp, if you're wondering, Lamp pitched 123 innings that year. And was mainly a reliever and a spot starter. So he's good for these number of innings for sure. Felix Mantilla up and he gets a 6-9. And of course we have established that's a fly ball right field. And an out. And no runs come across for the Red Sox in game one in the ninth inning, but we have the bottom of the ninth. And Mon Bouquet. No one in their right mind would bet against the Chicago White Sox. Is still going very strong. He's only allowed five hits. He struck out four and only one earned run. And they will get Dick Redatz up in the bullpen. Love Dick Redatz. At least I love that name. I know that. So we got Tom Pachorik up. It's not like we have a terrible lineup coming up. In fact, we have a very good lineup coming up. And that's a 4-7, which is a single. So, Pachorik on with a hit. But again, I'm not Kevin Cash. I'm not going to start freaking out right now. Greg Luzinski's up. He gets a 2-8, but now you can start freaking out because Luzinski just tied the game with a two-run home run. The Bull, good thing he was only temporarily injured. So Mambuket gives up his seventh hit, his first home run, and now he's allowed a tie game. And Carlton Fisk is up, and he gets a 5-7, which is a ground ball to second. The second baseman is Dalton Jones, and he's a 4. And that's a 5. That might be something. That is going to be a single. Yes. So the White Sox, I don't think they have any outs, right? And I said they had a good order coming up. Of course, they hadn't done anything all day up until now. But yeah, there's no outs. Ron Kittle is up. And he gets a 5-6, which is a home run 1-3 or a double. And that is going to be a double. 
So Ron Kittle, even Ron Kittle, man. What a turn of events this has been. So yeah, they're going to bring in Dick Radatz. <laughs> it's Radatz time. It's long past Radatz time. But um, yeah, Mon Bouquet only gets credit for going eight. It's eight plus, but you know, the plus is plus a shower. So we're going to bring in Dick Radatz. And the uh, Red Sox are going to bring in the infield because they can't afford to give up a run. Um, Advance Law up. And that's a 1-6, which is a pop-out to short. So there is one away. They get Vance Law. Scott Fletcher up. He gets a 6-4, which is a fly ball left field C, but that doesn't move anybody. And so Radatz comes in and shuts the door so far, and we got Julio, the star, and he gets a ground ball A. So he doesn't get any, he doesn't do any more damage. But the White Sox do get the two runs they need to take the, uh, they're to tie the game at three. And that brings up Carl. Yastrzemski, and we still have Lamp out there. Pretty soon that's going to have to change. 5-4 is a single. Might even have to change, well, not right now because I don't have anybody up. Um, and unlike, you know, I mean, I could just say, like in the computer game, you don't warm people up, but I'm not going to do that. We're not going to play that way. So uh, somebody has to warm up, and it's going to be Salome Baroja. Warming up for the White Sox. And Canigliero up. He gets a 5-5, which of course has to be a single. So there's two on. Canigliero really has been a thorn in our side. And... Uh, Lee Thomas is up. He gets a 6-7. That is a ground ball to short. Uh, Fletcher is a 3 at short. That's an 8. That may be a double play. Let's hope. It is a double play. So, the Red Sox move a man over to third, but now there's two down. Lee Thomas is out on that. And we're going to take Lamp out. So let's see, five and two thirds, one third, one, two, three, three and a third, so four. So he's gone four. And we're bringing in Salome Baroja. So that brings in Salome Baroja and to pitch to Rico Petroselli with a man 90 feet away. And he gets a 2 9, which is a strikeout. You know, I wanted to say that this was in an era where, you know, the 65 Red Sox, where guys didn't strike out a lot, but they really do have a lot of strikeouts on their card. Maybe that was part of their problem. Anyway, we go to the bottom of the 10th. We're in the bottom of the 10th in a 3-3 game. And we have Rudy Law up. And he gets a 2-8 facing Radatz. Triple 1-2 to two or a single. And that's a triple. <laughs> All right. Well, now the Red Sox really are in trouble. Uh, that is a triple off Radatz. The infield will definitely come in for the Red Sox. Harold Baines is up. He gets a 5-3. That's a ground ball to first. The first baseman is Lee Thomas, who is a 3. That is a 5. Uh, 5 and 3 is an out 1, but I believe that just holds the runner because the infield was in. Um, so Baines is out. That brings up Tom Pachorek. Tom Pachorek gets a 5-5, which is a strikeout. Radatz strikes him out. This is not good. Not good at all. 
So now the infield's back for the Red Sox. A man 90 feet away and the bull is up. And he gets a 4-7, which is a strikeout. Luzinski with the K. No runs for the Red Sox or the White Sox. We go to the top of the 11th. And we still have Baroja out there. He pitched 70 innings. So he's good for at least a second inning, you would think. Again, I don't have the extended set with the 83 White Sox, so I have a limited uh, number of pitchers I can bring in. Lenny Green is up. He gets a 4-3. That is going to be a fly ball to the left fielder. That is not good. It's Kittle. And that's going to be a 5. That may be an out. It is. Kittle makes a play for the first time in his life. So we got Lenny Green is out. And he was the one that was benefiting from Kittle being out there, but not on that one. Frank Malzone is up. He gets a 3-7, which is a fly ball to left field. And the longer this goes, the worse it is for the Red Sox, because the White Sox are the home team, and they have a great offense. Bob Tillman up. 1-9, ground ball to the shortstop, and he is out. We go to the bottom of the 11th. Carlton Fisk, and of course Redats now. Redats had 124 innings pitched, so he's good for it too. 5-7 is a ground ball to second. That The second baseman's a 4. This is really the Achilles heel of the team, although that's an 8. Eight and four at second is a one base error. So Dalton Jones does make an error and allows um, Fisk to get aboard. And I might make a controversial move here and put in a pinch runner, maybe. But again, we don't have a lot of good. Yes, we do. Jerry Dibzinski will go in and run for Fisk. So that's Jerry Dibzinski that's aboard now. And he's only out there, really, so that he can... Um, so that he can score on, base, on a base hit or extend base hits, an extra base. With Ron Kittle up. And no down, and um, yeah, and that's a two-four, which is a ground ball in the shortstop double play. So that whole plan just went right out the window. As Kittle is out, and Vance Law is up, and he gets a six-ten, which is a ground ball second base C. Vance Law out. No runs come across. And uh, that is going to be it for Baroja. He goes two, I believe. Wait, no. Nine and two thirds. One th he goes one and. Wait a minute. Nine and two thirds. He goes one and a third. Baroja goes one and a third, and I have to bring in the catcher replacement for Dibzinski, who was a base runner, and that's going to be Mark Hill. So you can see now we've got the very light hitting Mark Hill in at catcher. And we are going to go with... Britt Burns. Britt Burns will be the new pitcher for the White Sox. I didn't say he was warming up, but that was between innings, so I guess I didn't really have to say that. Or even if I had to, I didn't. So, you know, whatever. Sue me. So we've got in the top of the 12th, the Red Sox coming up with Dalton Jones. Who has been costing him with his iron glove 
and we get a 4-6, which is a strikeout. Britt Burns strikes out to a guy right between two walks. Felix Mantia comes up. He gets a 6-7, which is a strikeout. Two away. Britt Burns, not with one of the best cards you'd ever want to see, but he strikes out the first two guys he faces. And then Yastrzemski comes up, and he gets a 5-7, which is a strikeout. He strikes out the side. Again, the longer this goes on, the more it favors the White Sox. But I keep saying that, and the White Sox yet do not score a run. And they will lead off their part of the inning with Scotty Fletcher. And this is, let's see, eight, one, two, three. You know what? Well, three. Yeah. That's going to be it for Redats, too. He went three, so that's going to bring in... Um, We're going to bring in Arnold Early. I have never in my life heard of Arnold Early, but he is a pitcher. And he's coming on to pitch to Scott Fletcher. And he gets a 5-8, which is a fly ball to center, one away. Julio down by the schoolyard gets a 6-3, which is a walk. So we get a walk off early with Julio down by the schoolyard. Who can run, but you know what else he can do? He can steal. And he's a double A, so he is going to try to steal. And that's a 7, so there's no catcher in the universe that gets him. So he steals the base. And now we got a runner at second with one away. And Rudy Law up. And that's a 2-4, which is a pop-out to second. Two away. And Harold Baines up. And Harold Baines gets 3-8, which is a strikeout. Early striking the man out. We go to the top of the 13th. Uh, where is the other die? There it is. Tony Canigliaro is up. He gets a 1-5 and he walks. Canigliaro drawing the walk. Burns walking the man. Lee Thomas gets three, the 6-3. Six, 6-3 three. Six, three is a ground ball to first. He is a... Um, four. That's Luzinski, the bull. Twelve and four. That's an out with no runners on, so it's a fielder's choice. Runner at first, one out. Lee Thomas out. Rico Petroselli gets a 3-8, which is a double one to nine or a single. And that is a double. So now... Petroselli hitting a double. First hit of the game for him, for him, too. Infield has to come in for the White Sox. And that brings up Lenny Green, who's been big today. 6-9, though, is a fly ball center field B. That scores the go-ahead run for the Red Sox. Lenny Green, he's been huge. Earned run allowed. And Frank Melzone up, and he gets a 3-7, which is a fly ball to left. And if the White Sox cannot get a single run here, at least, they will lose game one. And Tom Pachorek's up, and he gets a 5-5, which is a strikeout. Luzinski, the bull... Gets a 5-11, which is a strikeout. Early with his second strikeout of this inning. Third on the game, Mark Hill up. 
You got a 6-5, which is a home run 1-5 to five, or a double for Mark Hill. Come on. Come on. No, it's a double. Now, you would not have thought that Mark Hill was going to get a... Get a uh, getting it bad even really but let alone he got a, in a bat and a hit which was a double and that's the first hit allowed by early and Ron Kittle's up and he gets a 5-2 which is a ground ball B and that is going to be it for the White Sox as they go down to defeat by the score of 4-3 to the 1965 Red Sox. Hey, what happened? In 13 innings. And so we will see you for game two, which will be in Boston. And the Boston Red Sox will have an opportunity to knock off the 83 White Sox and be the second um, underdog team to advance to the next round. But that's it for me right now. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.